Today, I wanted to talk to you about data extraction and how to create a bill of materials based on the attributes that are in your drawing. Now, our engineering add-on NetQ uses attributes to calculate the bomb and the fittings in your piping drawing. Maybe your drawing doesn't have NetQ in it, and maybe you're just wanting to extract whatever attributes you have based on the blocks in your drawing. So this works for all sorts of attributes. I'm also using a AutoCAD alternative called AviCAD, and we're in our 2025 release now, in which the data extraction feature has been improved. If you have AutoCAD, maybe you'd like to have a look at that. If you're interested in a alternative, AviCAD's native file type is also DWG, and the two programs can work side by side. So let's start the extraction. We just type in data extraction. Here, we're gonna create a new data extraction. As we're doing this, it's going to save this template file here. So we're just gonna give it a name. Well, let's call this MetQ. You can just go with whatever options are selected here. Now here, it's just gonna go through and find all the objects in the draw. Now what we can do is we can deselect all these objects that we don't want. The ones with the P1 in front of them are MetQ objects. And again, maybe your drawing doesn't have MetQ objects in it, so just make sure that you select the objects that you need. Choose next. And here we can just uncheck everything on the right window. That's not an attribute. And we'll uncheck the bottom two options here and then the top two. So we're just left with these properties here. Here it shows you a preview of the table itself and what it will look like. We do want to combine the identical rows and this is going to tabulate all the items for us. We choose next. Here, we have the option of inserting the table into the drawing, or we could export this to a CSV file. So we'll just choose to do it in the drawing, and then we click Finish. And now it's asking us for the insertion point, and this is our table. If we wanted to export this table at this point, we can just type in Table Export, which is here. We select the table. This is going to be a CSV file. So we'll just give it the same name. Okay. Now, if I go into my cell editor, I'll just choose file, open, and I'll choose this CSV file here and open. And now I can manipulate this however I want, or I could just do a printout, for example. If you wanted to insert a column in here, perhaps you give this the column name item and then you put in the number one, for example, here in the first cell, and the number two in the second, and then you highlight both of these. See the grip here in the lower right? We can just pull this down to the very bottom of the table, and then what it does is it will populate the numbers based on these first two cells. Now what we can do is save as, we'll give this a name, uh, the MetQ2 file, and let's go ahead and close this. Let's get rid of this table here that we have. I'll just do a table yeah, this time. We can pull the objects from the CSV file, choose OK. There's our MetQ2 file there. Now we have the item column as a part of the table. Now we do need to rework this a little bit. You'll see these grips, which you can pull over. I'm using my near snap which allows me to snap right on the table. We just do that for each. So these edits apply to all tables, even the first table yeah. I showed you. As long as it's a table, you can move columns around, you can insert columns. Let's just highlight this one row here. I'm gonna left click, and then I'm gonna shift click down here, and that highlights that entire row. And if I want to, I could increase the text height to let's say, 5 sixteenths, I'm over in my properties palette. I can also change the alignment here to let's say middle left and that's going to move that text down a little bit. So all the edits can be done from the properties palette or if you wanted to use the ribbon you could use these tools up here such as insert row, here's delete column so if I wanted to get rid of this right column here it's a matter of selecting it at the top and get rid of that entire. If I wanted to put a remark in here, I could just double click here on this cell, type in the remark testing, and mm -hmm. then that just adds it right in there. 
Remember when I saved the options in the data extraction? So if I type in data extract and then choose this option here, I can go back to that file that I saved. And this way I don't have to continually choose the options. The only thing you need to be careful of is if you're in a new drawing, you need to browse to a new drawing. Otherwise it's going to add this drawing in there. So just keep that in mind. So we'll just wait for it to populate. Each of these are for different parts in MetQ. So the P111 is just for the straight pieces of piping. And those pieces are going to have lengths in the schedule. So let's just go through here and insert this into the drawing. And we'll just type in the new command and then L for last, enter, and then just move this up a little ways. So you can see all the pipe names are P111. And of course, we could always click on this column here and delete it. You can see the links here listed as well. So lastly, I wanted to show you how you could use the express tool to bubble your drawing. You could do this in NetQ, which might be a lot easier for you. This is just one other way of doing it. So if we come up to our express tools and up here, you'll see the uh, markers command, which you can just type in at the command prompt. If you click on this here, we can define our text type. I believe we're using 316 in the table itself. So let's just use that. Um, we're going to start with the number one and then we'll choose the hexagon shape here and we'll choose start and as we insert points in our drawing it's auto numbering for us so maybe print the schedule and then reference the schedule to your drawing and then a number it up you can also change the value of these just by double clicking on number six for this one so it's very easy to work with you could always use the MLD command to attach a leader to, to the bubble itself. Now, down here, when you type in MLD, you can choose to have the leader landing first versus the leader arrow first. So it might be easier in the long run to label with that option. Hopefully this video has been helpful. You feel free to email or call me. The number here is 888-271. 7121. Thanks, bye.